part 10 of the Revelation Prophecy. I'm Jack. This one is called the 144,000. Let's begin. Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree, two forces contending. There's a battle, one force restraining the other. On one side we have four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. This controversy will involve the whole earth. These angels signify a group of servants who we are going to identify later. But they will be found all over the earth and they're holding back the four winds. There are only two forces in the battle between good and evil, between light and darkness, between truth and the lies. On one side is Christ and his servants and on the other side is the devil and his servants. And so here we have the four angels restraining the four winds. The four winds represent the forces of Satan. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. He will raise up a destroying wind. And then he went on to prophesy of that wind. Jeremiah 51 verse 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes for his devices against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord the vengeance of his temple. The destroying wind is the empire of the Medes and the armies that will take over and bring the Babylon empire to an end. So these forces of Satan represent the kingdoms of these worlds that he will marshal and the armies of this world. But at this particular point, the four angels signifying a group of servants through the power of the word, through the word that they prophesy, will bind the powers of Satan, will hold back the four winds from hurting, harming the inhabitants of the earth, signified here in Revelation chapter 7 verse 1, by the earth, the sea, nor on any tree, they will hold back the winds from hurting or blowing on these things here. Revelation chapter 7 verse 2 And I saw another angel ascending from the east. The east is from where the sun rises. Symbolically, it is the direction of Christ who is the son of righteousness. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stool. The Son of Righteousness rising in the lives of his servants, and here we have an angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So the, this angel ascending from the east is working with the four angels holding back the four winds. And this angel from the east has the seal of the living God. God's mark, God's seal of ownership is none other than the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. 
who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. The Holy Spirit is the seal of God and He's sealed in our hearts. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So it is through the Holy Spirit that we are sealed. He is the seal of the living God. He is the mark of God's ownership. See what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8 verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You see, that's why it's so important to be born again of the water and of the Spirit. For Jesus said to Nicodemus, except you be born again of the water and the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And Paul wrote in Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. He is the seal, the mark of God's ownership. And so important to be anointed with the Holy Spirit, to be baptized of the Spirit, to be baptized in Christ through the Spirit. Back to Revelation chapter seven, verse two, let's read it again. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, another group of servants ascending in Christ, with Christ, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. And this is what they said in verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Their work is to seal the servants of God. The work of the other group of servants is to restrain the forces of Satan. And as we look at the work that they will do, we can identify the two groups of servants here. You see, it is the work of the priests to bring about the sealing through the preaching of the gospel. And it is the work of the prophets to prophesy the word that will restrain the force of Satan. And these two groups of servants were previously shown to us in Revelation chapter four in the symbol of the 24 elders, the priests who wore crowns and sat on thrones the royal priesthood and in the four bees signifying the prophets full of eyes with six wings. Listen to the song they sing. Let's read it again to be reminded. Revelation chapter 5 verse 8 And when he had taken the book, the four bees and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Verse 9, And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and listen to what they say here, and hath redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Verse 10, And hath made us unto our God kings and priests, we shall reign on the earth. These two groups of servants, the priests and the prophets, will work together to bring about the sealing of the servants of God in the fulfillment of the revelation prophecy. God's church that was previously shown to us in the symbol of a white horse. And now we have God's church being raised by the two groups of servants. 
Verse 3 now again saying, Heard not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And as, as I mentioned previously, they will bring about the sealing of the servants of God through the preaching of the gospel. This is the work of the priest of the new covenant, the royal priesthood, is to offer the blood of Christ to preach Christ crucified. This is the power of God unto salvation. Those who believe will be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 13, notice what Paul wrote. In whom, and he's talking about Jesus, you also trusted. Let me read the verse before verse 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Then in verse 13, in whom you also trusted. After that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So this group of servants signified by the angel ascending from the east and signified before that by the 24 elders will preach the gospel for the sealing of God's church in the fulfillment of the Revelation prophecy. Verse 4, Revelation 7. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Remember this, when you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, irrespective of what race you come from, or what nation you come from, or what country, when you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, you become spiritual Israel. God is spirit. And it is not Israel in the flesh that he's looking at. It is Israel in the spirit. And to become Israel in the spirit, we must believe in Christ. Turn with me to Paul's writing. It's in the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 28. Notice what he says. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. It's spiritual. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Verse 29. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. It's the inward Jew, the spiritual Jew. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God. Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 again the words of Paul for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, baptized into Christ through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. Verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. The racial distinction comes to an end in Jesus Christ. There is neither bond nor free, whether we be bond or whether we be free, servants or free, makes no difference in Christ. There is neither male nor female, no gender difference. In spirit, we are all the same in Christ. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Verse 29, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. And he is according to the promise. It is through Christ, it is spiritual Israel. The church of God is spiritual Israel. The 144,000 in the fulfillment of the Revelation prophecy. The 144,000, the Revelation is beautiful because we will see this again and again. Information coming through and repeatedly to confirm us that we are on the right track 
in the understanding of the Revelation prophecy. So we meet the 144,000 again. Let's go to Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb, well, who's the lamb? Jesus Christ stood on the Mount Zion, and with him and hundred forty and four thousand. Notice this, having his father's name written in their foreheads. You see that symbol, the symbolic, the father's name is his spirit, the Holy Spirit, written in their foreheads, written in their hearts written in their hearts with the Spirit of the Living God. And now, let's move on to the number. Is it a physical, literal number? Will there actually be only 144,000 in the Church of Christ in the fulfillment of the Revelation? No more, no less? No, it is spiritual. It is symbolic. The number 144,000 is symbolic. Let me take you now to another symbol of God's church. You see, God's church in the Revelation is, is revealed in different symbols. One in a white horse. Now we have 144,000. Later we'll see her referred to as the temple, the temple of God. Then as a woman, a woman clothed with a sun. And then finally, as we come to the close of the Revelation, a city, a beautiful city. Let's look at the measurements. Revelation chapter 21, verse 9, the invitation to John. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. The bride, the lamb's wife, who other than the church? And at the time of the revelation, the white horse, the 144,000, sealed with the Holy Spirit in their hearts, Father's name written in their foreheads, and now John's being invited to see her, the bride, the Lamb's wife, the wife of Christ is his church. Verse 10, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, another symbol, not an actual city, not a literal city. God's church is not made with things that we can see. God is spiritual. His church is spiritual. Not made with the hands of man, but made by his spirit in his servants. Descending out of heaven from God. Then in verse 11, having the glory of God. Let's move on. Verse 12, had a wall great and high, had 12 gates. See the number 12 coming in. And the names written on the gates. Verse 12, the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, spiritual Israel. And then in verse 14, the wall of the city had 12 foundations, the number 12, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. In the names of the apostles, the spirit of the apostles in the church of God. Now in verse 15, and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. Look at the measurements now. Verse 16, and the city lieth four square. It's four square. The length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are all equal. You see, the symbolism in this symbol is retained, revealed the 12 spiritual tribes of Israel, because it was sealed of each tribe, 12,000. 12 times 12,000 is 144,000. Let's back up, go back to Revelation chapter seven, read it again and come back. Verse four, 
And I heard the number of them which was sealed, and there was sealed 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And then John reveals the names of the tribe. Verse 5, of the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad was sealed 12,000. The sons of Jacob, of whom the tribes were named after. 6. Of the tribe of Asia was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephilim was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manassas was sealed 12,000. Manassas was the son of Joseph. And the name of Dan, Jacob's son, is missing. Verse 7, of the tribe of Simeon was sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Levi was sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Ishika was sealed 12,000. Then in verse 8, of the tribe of Zebulon was sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Joseph was sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. 12,000 of each. Symbolic. Symbolic of the spiritual Israel. Spiritual Israel, the Church of God. And now as we come to the city, we have a perfect cube, a cube where the length and the breadth is equal to the height. And to a cube there are 12 sides and each of the sides 12,000. 12 times 12,000, 144,000, symbolic. The number is symbolic and the meaning of the number we get in the very next verse, chapter 21, verse 17. And he measured the wall thereof. So he measured that wall great and high, and hundred and forty and four cubits. Hundred and forty-four cubits. A literal measurement, but symbolic. And, he, and then the meaning of the measurement is given according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. It's the measure of the man. It's the measure of a spiritual man. 144 cubits makes no sense when we say it's the measure of a man unless it is symbolic of the spiritual measure. It's the spiritual measure of a man that is of the angel, the angel in this case, the messenger, the messenger of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. 144 is the spiritual number of a man or a woman who is sealed with the Holy Spirit and together they make up the Church of God, the 144,000.